Hey, so this is gonna be a short video. Uh, there is, uh, I got some feedback about wanting to know how to record Tone.js uh, with the web browser. Um, for those that don't know, we've been doing a lot of uh, tutorials uh, on how to make noise with the web browser using Tone.js. Um, and so I, uh, I actually had never recorded um, Tone.js audio before. Um, using the web browser itself. I normally went through some way of recording my system's audio um, while Tone.js was playing, um, but there's a way we could do it with the web audio API. Um, and so hopefully this will be a, a quick tutorial uh, on how to do that. Um, so the first thing we're gonna need uh, is an audio element. Uh, and what's gonna happen here, and you can see that it's over there already, um, I think, no, controls. Um, oh yeah. uh, I had uh, already had it in there and then deleted it, but didn't rerun. So we have this audio element. This is where we're gonna put the audio file. Um, and then it gives us the ability on the audio element when there's actually audio in there uh, to download it. Um, so just for sanity here, let's do audio display block margin one rem auto and let's see what that looks like there we go so we have centered our audio here um, we don't really need any of this everything's going to be javascript at this point so the first thing i'll do as always is do a little console.clear let's run this clear everything up and uh, we're going to need tone.js as always so let's add that so the way that this works, so Tone.js uses the audio web audio API. Um, and a part of the web audio API is this idea of a context. Um, and what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to use um, the web audio API uh, by itself without Tone.js to do the actual recording. Tone.js we're gonna use to make noise, but then we're gonna connect it to code that isn't Tone.js code in order to record the sounds that Tone.js is making. Um, let's, uh, let's first set up a couple uh, constants here. So audio is document.querySelector audio. So we're gonna need that audio element. Let's make a synth to make noise, new tone.synth. And then um, let's say const audio context equals the tone.context. So tone.context is gonna return an audio context. Let's uh, actually look at it, console.log actx. So we'll see here. All right, so this is an audio context element or object. Uh, you can see here um, that uh, that's what we're looking at. So that we're, we're getting that from Tone because Tone handles the con audio context on its own. If we wanted to, we could do our own. Um, we could say something like tone.context equals new audio context. Um, I spelled it right. Uh, this is just standard web audio API stuff. Um, we could override Tone's context if we wanted to. Um, but we're not gonna worry about that for now. So that's what we're grabbing from here is the default audio context that Tone.js is using. Um, and let's, uh, we should probably make some noise first, right? So Tone, no, synth.toMaster, first of all. I always forget that. And then let's do tone.transport.scheduleRepeat and that gives us time. And let's just, uh, let's have some stuff here. Const notes equals uh, cdefgab dot split. That gives us an array dot map. And then remember, we wanna have like an octave in there. So that, that'll turn into an array of C4, D4, E4, F4, G4, A4, B4. So those are our notes. And then we'll say var note. Uh, we're not gonna use const, uh, let's just say let note um, equals zero. We're gonna change that every time 
uh, we loop through, so it can't be a const. Um, and so we'll have this repeat every quarter note. And we'll just for now say synth.trigger attack notes note then note plus plus and we'll say note module notes dot length and then we just do tone dot transport dot start and let's see if that works here All right, so that's gonna be the audio that we wanna record. Um, so we're making noise. We have this audio element that's not doing anything right now. And we wanna record that noise that we're making. So let's put some conditions in here. And then we'll, we'll pseudo code this for a second. So we'll say, if note is equal to zero, we're gonna start recording and then we'll play a note and we'll say well actually we'll say if note is equal is greater than notes dot length we're gonna just stop recording and then while we're in there let's do tone dot transport dot stop and then we'll probably need to synth.trigger release time. And we forgot to add time down here. And then it'll never be over the notes.length, so we don't need to worry about that. Else, synth.trigger attack current note. So we're going to put some starting start recording code and stop recording code in here. Um, well, let's just see this. So what's going to happen is every time this runs, every quarter note, if it's equal to zero, uh, so the first time through, that was a fruit fly and I just nailed it. Um, uh, first time through, start recording. Then we play the note. Last time through, so when it's on that B4, we're going to stop the recording. Um, let's just write this to do. Uh, then we're going to trigger the release on the synth so it stops making noise. Maybe we'll do that first. And then finally stop the loop. So if it's not the last one, trigger attack. So what should happen here is this should run until it gets to the B4 and then stop. Let's just check. Awesome. So that's working. Um, all right, let's get into recording this thing. I'm going to get rid of this. Yeah, I always like dumb things. Okay, so let's work on start recording. So what we need to know about here, so there's this media recorder element or object in the Web Audio API, and that takes, um, it, it takes a stream um, and we, we basically need to create a media stream. Uh, this is all messed up. Um, we need to create a media stream destination from that audio context. So let's do const dest equals audio context dot, what is it? Create media stream destination. And then we will do const media, oh, let's just call it recorder. Recorder, yeah, equals new media recorder, and it takes the stream object. So what this returns, the destination, is has a stream in it. So we'll do new media recorder desk.stream important that we're providing the stream here. So this shouldn't throw any errors, even though I always do that in this mode. Um, let's refresh here. All right, so this didn't throw any errors. I think we're good. 
So remember we're connecting synth to master. We also need to do synth.connect destination. So that that should let's run it. That should be okay. All right, so we've plugged it into the recorder in addition to plugging it into the sound that we hear. That's the two master over here. Um, so then we should be able to do recorder.start. And let's just do this. And then recorder.stop. And this should work even though we're not doing anything with it. Let me uh, just run this. Cool, so no errors, that's a good sign. Um, so now what we need to do, and I actually have some of it over here. This is really important. We're gonna have, we need a place to like store this data, the audio data, like the stuff that it's recording. So we'll just call this uh, chunks, is a good term. And, down here, I'm gonna paste this recorder on data available. So that's when, when the recorder gets a bunch of information to store, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna take that event and into chunks, we're gonna push the events data. So that's the first hook we need uh, here is on data available. And then the last one is recorder dot on stop. So then we're gonna get another event. And from here, we basically, we need to create um, an audio blob of that, of those chunks of data. And so what that looks like is, and I'm cheating here, let blob equal new blob, literally. And then we tell it we want chunks, that's what we're blobbing. And then we need to provide a type of audio slash aug. That's an aug file. And then based on my research, we also need to provide some codecs for whatever reason. So now that we have that blob, we can just do audio. Remember this audio element? Audio.source equals url.create object URL, is that how you spell it? Yeah, and then we just provide the blob. Um, so now we have those events hooked up. Let's run this. So remember, on stop, that's gonna be fired when we call recorder.stop right here. Um, and then after we record recorder.start, on data available is gonna fire multiple times and push stuff into chunks. And then once we stop, we create a blob URL uh, of that audio data with, uh, I keep writing audio, glad I caught that. Um, we create a blob uh, that's aug vorbis audio file, or I guess aug opus, I don't even know. Um, and then we set the source of this thing to be that, that audio file. And so it's just gonna be a giant string and we'll, we'll, look, we'll see it in a second. Um, let's just hit run. Ah, look what we have here. So here is our audio. So this is coming from the audio file, not from Tone.js. So what we can do is we can download this and it popped up beneath my browser here. I don't know if you could see it. Uh, but it downloaded an aug vorbis file. Um, another interesting thing here, we can look at this and let's actually, oh, it doesn't expand the blob, I don't think. Well, maybe. What happens if we just paste this in? Ha, huh, that's funny. All right, that's pretty cool. So I guess the blob must be stored locally somewhere. Um, but when we download it, it's a, it's a full-on audio file. Um, 
So anyways, that's how you record audio. Let's uh, just go through everything we did here. So up at the top, uh, we define uh, the audio element, we create a new tone synth, we grab the context that tone is using, and on that context, we create a stream destination. Then we create a recorder that's gonna record the stream at that destination. We connect our synthesizer to the stream destination. Then we connect it so that we can hear it while it's playing to master. We define some chunks that we're gonna push the audio data into. And then we do some note stuff so we can actually make noise. Then we repeat this uh, function every quarter note using Tone.js. We start the recorder the first time around. Uh, the last time around, we stop the synthesizer, we stop the recording, and then we stop the loop that's happening. If it isn't the last time, we trigger attack for the current note. Um, and then we have our two recorder methods defined here. And uh, yeah, that's it. Cool, hope this was helpful. I know it's kind of quick. Uh, if you want to know more about tone.context, that's in their docs um, here. It's just a wrapper around uh, audio context. And then here's the uh, MDN, here's the MDN URLs uh, for these things. All right, hope that was helpful. I'll put a link to this pen in the video description and stuff. And uh, yeah, talk to you later. Keep going, it gets easier.